Yo, what up street dogs there, Kim? All right, the thought. This one is about existential photography. So shout out to my buddy, uh, Jeffrey Lamb, jeffrey-lamb.com. So Jeffrey is working on this project about uh, existential health. So like, you know, everyone has a different definition of health or why they want to pursue health. So existential health, is the, the gist of it is, you know, no one ever asks you, why be healthy or do you even care to be healthy towards what ends and existential photography is uh, is my notion where it's like why make photos so existentialism or existential dread to exist so we all exist we're all flesh and matter uh, and so then the the basic question is what is the point of life and what's the point of being alive and what should I do with my life? And um, the fact is, most people who fall victim to existential dread are actually highly intelligent people who are atheists, don't believe in God. And a lot of these people end up getting suckered. They think about like mysticism, where they become born again Christians, whatever you have you. And most people don't deal well with uncertainty and modern society has also not been optimized to encourage independent thinking like at least in america k through 12 education even higher ed is really not optimized to encourage aberrant thinking and independent thought because it's kind of an old relic of a system we get it from the germans and it's kind of like if I could describe intelligence, or sorry, not intelligence, um, education in modern day America, the gist is teach students to be obedient, to not dare to ask the teacher's questions, to sit up, shut up, um, to become good followers and to become very obedient, domesticated dogs that don't bark back, don't run around, and the more obedient, the better. And also, to teach them how to, uh, Nietzsche says this well too, teach them how to deal well with boredom. <laughs> Cause like honestly, the, the big issue too, like this happened when me as a kid, I was like so bored all the time. And then the, the big issue of being bored is, when you're bored, you don't pay attention, you don't really study well. And as a kid, you know, I think kids are the biggest geniuses and kids are never given the opportunity to just play and like have fun, right? Like that's actually a huge problem in South Korea right now is that like these kids are like committing suicide at huge rates because they're not allowed to play or do anything that's like natural. And to truth be told, I don't think that adults are or should be that different from children. Adults also want to play and do fun things and stuff like that. But then now modern day society says, oh, if you pursue something which has an aim towards making money or being productive, then it's virtuous. But to play for the sake of play is not virtuous and you're gonna, you're sitting and you're gonna go to hell. Is essentially the gist. So what is the, the downside of this kind of uh, line of thinking? The downside then is we're creating a generation of boring kids, boring humans, boring adults, who lack the critical ability to think for themselves. And some of the biggest issues about that is this whole notion of political correctness really hinders original thought because it, it makes kids or people or adults scared about sharing what they really think. And even like a lot of people on the internet, this is, this is my criticism too, is that most people are scared shitless to share their opinions because, I mean, A, they kind of lack the courage or they're cowards, or B, their, um, what they say or what they dress or how they act or whatever is dependent on their socioeconomic status. So let's say, you know, I'm a professor at a university or let's say, um, you know, I'm employed by a tech company, whatever. I'm not allowed to say my mind because I might get fired. And you know, like, let's say, you know, you got a mortgage, a car payments and two dogs and half a kid, whatever, one kid, 1.5 kids, um, then you're not gonna say your mind, right? Because you're afraid, right? And, which is like totally legitimate, obviously, it, it, it makes sense, right? 
But the problem then is society gets stuck and hijacked by these, you know, nerds or professors or tenured peoples or, you know, CEOs or whoever, people who are protected by institution or the CEO of a company or the chair of a chair of a chair of a chair of a board of a board of a board or the shell companies created by um, uh, small you know, groups of conglomerates upon conglomerates that no one actually has the courage to truly speak their mind. And so this is the simple heuristic. I don't trust the opinion of nobody on the internet who puts ads on their YouTube videos or monetizes their podcast or whatever because think about it this way. I mean, just do some simple maths, right? Or simple thinking. If your you know, platform or whatever is dependent on sponsorship ad revenue, you'll never really speak your, your mind. Like even Joe Rogan, love the guy to death, I think he's, he's great. Um, he's never really, as long as he you know, has like a monetary deal with let's say you know, Spotify or you know, making ad revenue via people X, Y, and Z, He's never really going to tell us what he really 100% thinks. Maybe like 99.9%, which is still pretty good. And then obviously they're just saying, you know, everyone's got to make a living. But like, for me, um, I'm highly skeptical and sus of anybody who says X, Y, and Z without sharing their real opinion and thought, who is not independently wealthy from their own opinion and how they make money. So even for myself, you know, I got, I got at least a, a Lambo in the bank or a Richard Milley in the bank, independently wealthy. Um, I could, I essentially live like a poor person. I feed myself on nothing but 99 cent a pound pork, dollar a pound chicken. And even though I'm trying to go like bodybuilder status, it's very difficult for me to even eat more than five pounds of meat a day. And honestly, at this point, as long as I have meat, Wi-Fi, and meet Wi-Fi and uh, maybe a gym or some weights. I'm I'm happy. So or a laptop, whatever you whatever you have you. And so like nowadays, because essentially I've been effectively retired since I was like 28, 29. I only want to share thoughts and talk about things that I'm generally curious about. And the only reason I'm sharing these thoughts with you is that like, obviously this is all just my opinion, is that if my ideas and my thoughts even has a 1% chance of being interesting to you, to me it's, it's worth sharing and pursuing. So, essentially I'm advocating for you to be more courageous to really share your idea, uh, show your face, reveal your real name, first and last name, don't do anything anonymously on the internet unless it's a life and death situation. So for example, obviously if you're living in North Korea and you know you come out against the government or Kim Jong-un or whoever, and your life is in risk, then yes, anonymity is, is essential, right? But if it's more of like, oh, you know, I might lose my job or become poor, poverty, bankrupt, whatever, then I'm like, dude, just, just have the guts, have the huevos, have the, the ovaries, have the balls to, to say what you really believe in. And so the more courageous you could be in life, the better. So for me in life, the greatest virtues are courage, audacity, and uh, brazenness. The worst vices are cowardice, um, yeah, probably only cowardice. Cowardice is the only vice that I could personally see. Um, so be more courageous, be more brazen, put more wings into your feet, into your tongue, and uh, say what's really on your mind.